Can you still see my screen? And I have this so we don't see. Yes. Uh, deck, deck. Oh, I can't make it so we can just see. Oh, and someone else just joined. Hello. So what I've said is, okay, this is all about mental fitness. And it englobes um, three core mental muscles um, to really thrive um, during these challenging times. Okay, so the definition is the capacity to respond to life's challenges with positive energy um, besides anything else. So this is for us anyway, uh, it increases the pro action as opposed to procrastination. Um, it gives a peace of mind and a wellness being sort of heightened and it gives us healthier relationships because we have less meltdowns, right? Um, the research of this foundation is based on positive psychology, cognitive psychology, neuroscience, and performance science. And all this goes with positive intelligence in the middle. And they've done this um, from research from hundreds and hundreds of CEOs, executives. Now, this is Shazad, the guy who invented this, really wanted to bring sort of meditation, if you like, into um, the world of the CEOs. So it's got really um, non airy fairy terms, you know, it's very sort of business minded um, focused, but it can be used for everything and anything. Um, a lot of Stanford students, because he teaches at Stanford, he did a, for a lot of world class athletes. And then when he put it into the um, people, um, normal people, you know, there are many, many participants. Um, it also did become New York Times bestseller and it's translated into 20 languages, so what should we do? So how they did this is the power of factor analysis. So um, during, this is a sort of scientific way, mathematical way of um, discovering the root cause of something. And this results, because you're changing the root cause, it has radical simplification. So for example, all the colors in the universe are based on three primary colors. So any color we see or you know, lovely artists who paint, they just have three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and green if you're on digital, um, red, blue, and green. But um, from these three root primary colors, we get, you know, a whole array of stuff. So that's what they did. And the results for the factor analysis of the mental fitness are the saboteur interceptor, the sage power, and the self-command. So that's three core muscles that we have to work on which is, you know, a lot simplified than doing any sort of, you know, an hour meditation or a chanting or whatever it is you might be doing. And it's really very, very simple, totally effective. So he discovered also that there are 10 saboteurs, which are sort of on the left brain and five sage powers on the right brain. They work in those spheres of the brain. The saboteur interceptor we'll look at first. Where's my, okay, sorry. Um, so the saboteur interception, we have the judge. Every single person on earth has the judge. And um, during the course, if you decide to do this, you will hear my judge. And he's really not a very nice person. So I don't like to bring him out when I'm doing these webinars because, you know, people get sort of frightened. But my judge is incredibly violent towards me and how I talk to myself and how I judge myself and hence to other people, right? So everyone has a judge. He's accompanied by these lovely people, the saboteurs. So we've got emotional, motion, motivation and style. So there's the controller, the hyperachiever, restlessness. Um, then there's the stickler, the pleaser, the hypervigilant, and the avoider, the victim and hyper-rational. So these are, or, you know, they all take turns into um, having their day or their moment or whatever. And, um, we don't have all of them. Sometimes we just have one of them. Sometimes we have three of them Could, together with the judge. Okay. The judge is always present. And um, how we know this is we do a, a saboteur assessment to get results. So for example, I did the assessment and um, I did it three times in a row because, you know, I'm one of these people that like to make, you know, probably my stickler side, I don't know. But, um, and in all of my saboteur tests, I had zero hypervigilance. So I can, you know, I can say that I'm not hypervigilant. Unfortunately, my two girls had that as their prime saboteur, you know, so that means that really made something clear to me that I could, you know, not understand my, my girls as much as I tried, you know, until I found this out, then I could, I looked into the hypervigilant, I understood their core modus operandi, and I could, you know, better understand and better cope with their sort of problems they were having and vice versa. 
So this is what you're, you know, when you do the saboteur assessment, which you can do, it's free. I highly suggest you all do that. It's, you know, even if you're in a couple with your family and everything, it really does make it easier. You get results like this. So these aren't, um, you know, written in stone. As I said, one day you might be in stickler mode. Another day you might be feeling victim mode or, you know, controller. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not, mummy always says, you know, written in stone. Um, these aren't sort of, you know, I'm only the stickler, so I've got to just treat my stickler. You know, it, they do change about depending on what you're dealing with. And um, it, it's very lovely. So when we did this as a family, eventually, um, although I'm divorced and everything, it was very recent we did this as a family. I found out that, OK, the two girls are hypervigilant um, plus um, avoider and the rest of the family is avoider. So, of course, that put me in, in controller mode. To, to get things done right but controller is not really how I am so this is why there was a total imbalance within the family unit and uh, had I done this you know at the beginning of my marriage etc cetera, etc cetera, um, there are many ways I could have you know changed the way I did things that I talked to people already I would have been in sage mode so that would have been better um, but you know it, it really does help so if, if you get nothing else please go and do this test you'll get the link um, on my website uh, because this really does help a whole load for all sorts of dynamics, your own even. So you get these results and it's all very well explained. And then we'll get back to the brain. So the saboteurs really work um, in the left side of the brain. So it's the limbic system. And I don't know whether you know anything about the brain, but the limbic system is the lizard brain also it's called. And it, um, if you've got something you know like if you're in a meeting and you're hungry well no matter how interesting the meeting is you're hungry so you're thinking um if you're in a job you're thinking oh is the vending machine on the second floor still selling those snacks that's really really nice no matter you know and you're not paying attention to what's going on and that's what the limbic brain does it's it has three you know uh, has a lot of survival mechanisms in place and it'll just really um take care of that nothing else will really matter so because before it was like there's you know noises in the bushes um how am i going to deal with that is that a tiger going to attack me or you know do i freeze do i run what am i you know was what am i going to do and that's sort of the fright flight freeze whatever faint system going on so nothing will really happen and this is how the saboteurs take you on um once you can change that to the to the sage power so you're in the middle prefrontal cortex and it's an empathy sort of circuitry so we should be you know once we can tap into that we're really highly tuned because as autistic people um, we're highly empathic right and um, that's why for us it's, it's really it just stops one part of the brain and allows us to tap into our natural powers if you want of a better word for that anyway so that's what they do generally um, the saboteur, as I was just saying, it motivates you through negative emotions, fear, stress, anger, guilt, shame, insecurity. Um, and a lot of times we won't be in that mode as, you know, autistics, but um, people will, neurotypicals will force us into that mode because our reaction will be such that they can't understand it. So we, you know, we set their stress systems off. And by mirroring, we get our own stress system going. So, which is why it's really lovely to have this because when you're talking to a neurotypical and they get their stress motivation things going because we're not being, you know, socially apt, um, we won't have to mirror them because we're in right brain mode and we're motivated through, you know, our positive emotions, our empathy, curiosity, creativity, passion and purpose. So we're already and hopefully we can stay in that well eventually we can stay in that strongly enough so that they mirror us and that's really when it gets really really fun and exciting to be outside not too long i know but it does get more exciting so the saboteurs um you know like the controller for example um in a business world and in a general world it does get results yeah you'll definitely get results because you're trying to control everything and do everything um, but, you know, you're not getting happiness. I was sort of pushed into control mode by the fact that everyone in the family was avoiding and um, taking any action. Um, and um, but I wasn't happy with that because, you know, I, I was forcing because that's not my natural way of being. Um, I didn't know how to cope with that. So I was just sort of forcing people to do things. And, you know, with the kids and stuff, it wasn't nice. 
but that's another thing. Whereas if you go from, you know, your sage power, you generate your highest success and you're really happy because you um, are operating from empathy, creativity, you know, if that person says that, well, why is he saying that? You know, and you can ask yourself these questions that are in, in sage mode, right? You're not asking from fear, but you're asking from a place of calm already. And that is so amazing that that means that, you know, it's a lot better already to do that. Um, so are negative emotions good for you? That is a good question. Well, of course, if you've got your hand on the hot stove, pain is a great way of saying, watch out, right? So we do need pain to tell us, you know, hold on, something's not quite right here. But the, the thing is, um, only for about a second as an alert, you then, you know, take your hand off the stove. You've learned to do that. That's a learned um, expression. Um, not expression, but reflex reaction. Anyway, so it's an alert signal. But then when you stay in negative emotion, it just hurts your ability to see clearly um, and respond with sage, maybe sage powers, which, you know, if you're more empathetic to the person who's just freaking out because they've burnt their hand, for example, and you're not, you know, you're being empathetic, saying, oh, you poor thing, shall I get some cream or whatever it is you might be saying, um, that's a lot more helpful than just saying, oh my God, you burnt your hand. Oh my God, you burnt, you know, being in panic mode like they are. Um, so the negative emotions are your saboteurs talking to you. And we saw there's 10 of them, the judge and the nine, you know, helpful people. Um, let's look at the sage now. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, so the sage, as I said, lives in the region of the brain, um, which is positive emotion. It's calmer. It's because you're calm, you can do it from, you know, clear-headed focus um, action you go into proactive as opposed to um, procrastinate mode um, and you see a bigger picture so I, I don't know about you but I tend to see a big picture and miss out a whole load of little details because I can't see the details because I'm in a panic mode but this means that I can sort of start to see the, the you know the smaller details needed to have this big picture come to fruition um, so that's why it's really lovely to um, come from the sage perspective. Um, it also helps you to see that even if you do have a, um, a spanner in the works, as it were, you eventually, when you take your hand off the hot stove or when you, you know, calm down from the spanner in the works, you can see that this is a positive outcome. So um, there, there's many examples of this, but I, I like to talk about the... Um, stallion story to explain this so the stallion story i don't know you you might know another version i'll just have a quick sip here because i'm parched okay so the stallion story is that um a farmer goes out to market with his son he goes and buys stallion right so he brings it back to the farm and the neighbors go oh you're so lucky but he spends his whole fortune on this right um oh you're so lucky you've got a stallion and the farmer goes well you know good news bad news who, who knows and uh, the stallion then gets stolen. So um, the neighbors are like, oh, you poor, you've lost all your fortune and your stallion. Oh my God, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the, the farmer says, well, good news, bad news, who knows? So the stallion then comes back with um, 10 other stallions. So, you know, they're all in the paddock and neighbors come and they're like, oh my goodness, such luck, you're so lucky. How fortunate for you, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the farmer says, well, good news, bad news, who knows? So the son says, right, dad, I'm going to, you know, um, break these horses in so that we can use them on the farm. And as he's breaking in the first stallion, he falls and breaks his leg. So the neighbors come along, they're, you know, lovely know-how. And they say, oh, la la, you know, he broke his leg. Oh, you put so, so how are you going to work and what's going to happen? And, you, you know, off they go in their story. And the farmer says, well, good news, bad news, who knows? And um, then the... Uh, um, King decides, the king of the kingdom decides he's in war with something, so he has to have his army. So he rallies up all the village, in all the villages of the kingdom, the sons. Um, but they don't, so the soldiers come and they come to the village. They don't, you know, take the farmer's son because he's got a broken leg. So, this, you know, the neighbours come along and say, oh, you know, good news for you, isn't it? You're so lucky. Our son's just gone and you're so lucky and da, da, da. And the farmer says, well, good news, bad news, who knows? Which just goes to show you know, that um, it, it doesn't really matter, but it depends on what perspective is true for you. So the saboteurs will say, oh God, this is so bad. You know, I've just spent all my fortune on this horse and it's gone and then, oh, well, he's broken his leg. And 
but the sage can see it as a gift you know when you your son's broken his leg so he can't help on the farm it needs more work for you etc but you know it is a gift because when the king's men come they don't take him because he's got a broken leg right so it goes to show that whichever one you concentrate on is the one that you become true so it's nice to have a way um and, and by this i mean a way of building up a muscle to you know go for number two stay you know this is a gift the sage perspective um that's always really handy so we'll see the self-command now the self-command is how you bring this about right how you go from saboteur to sage so we do this with 10 seconds of pq reps pq reps are what we call and we explain all this um, what we call the the actual exercises you're going to do. So um, I'll give you an example on why I decided to actually get certified in this. Um, my daughter, um, who's Asperger's also, was having a meltdown. So she's on the floor, crying hysterically and everything. And I'm going, oh my god, what can I do? You know, panic mode. And I, and I just, it was the beginning of my PQ rep session. So I said, okay, Zelly, this is on an app on the phone. I said, look, I'm just going to do some PQ reps with you if you can. You can just, you know, tie it along. Let's just do this. And I was just doing, I don't know, one of them. And um, it's uh, where well, you have to tense up some muscles, this one. And I was doing it and she just started paying attention. She looked at me and I was doing this funny face because I was crunching up all my muscles. And she just calmed down and started paying attention. And, you know, um, she's 16, 16, 17, well, she was 16 at the time. So, you know, she's an, an, an able to do and follow along. And so she started following along. So. When I saw these results on my kid who was having a, you know, meltdown on the floor here, bursting into tears and what have you, um, I just thought, oh my God, you know, this is really good. So these are 10 seconds um, of PQ reps exercise. So you build this muscle and that's what you do, okay? Um, and that's the simplicity of an operating system. So when you're feeling negative, you stop, you're in saboteur mode. So this is the first thing we intercept, okay? This is how we start building the muscles. We're stopping being in saboteur mode, or we see that we're in saboteur mode. That was initially how I had to do it, you know? Oh yeah, that's not me, that's my saboteur talking, okay? So that was step one for me. Uh, then I did some PQ reps, so I got my phone out, did some exercises, and um, that gets you out of saboteur mode into sage, right? left brain to right brain so um then you know this takes a couple of weeks um we can assume the sage perspective and then we can start talking about gifts and opportunity okay this is not an overnight thing um and then we generate the gifts so because we are much calmer and um to give you an example um to do these webinars i was always a nervous wreck doesn't mean to say i'm not you know nervous about it but now i'm my my nervous energy because i'm a sage mode is being used as a you know highly positive exciting thing and i just had this um and I, you know i don't know whether you can see me or not you know it's really annoying for me and i can't change it but i just have to go with it because i'm so happy to have you here and to be able to share this with you so if you can just do the sound of my voice then so be it and i'm going ahead with that Un, well, unscared shall i say i know it's a it's a bit of a hick but i'm going with sage power so I just don't know what gift it'll give me yet, but you know, we'll see. Time will tell, but I'm really happy that I'm, you know, you're still all here. So is it possible to just shift from saboteur to sage response, even though you're having tough challenges? So that is, of course, yeah, it's like anything, but the, you know, the depth and the scope of it will depend on mental, mental muscle strength. Okay. So I have been doing this uh, since July, so nine months now. Um, so my muscles are quite strong and um, this is why I was able to just shift into say just say well I just have to go you know I'm a very visual person so it's really frustrating for me that you can't see me or that I can't see you but it was just happening you know stopping on the sides you can see all the slides um, so I'd rather you see the slides and you hear my voice and you can read and you know because when I can't see the slides as a visual person that really frustrates me so that was my core and I made it and off I go into my sage mode um but obviously the, nine months ago i wouldn't you know i would have just been talking here a bit of a uh, 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 uh. so there you go so lasting positive you know um change does require a lot of mental muscle um it is true that you know when shit hits the fan sorry spanner hits the works um your immediate reaction is to panic that's just the way we are wired and we can't change that so 
um, this is why, you know, the bigger the muscle, that the, the sooner you can just change into um, your, your muscles, okay? Your muscles will take over and you'll just change into um, your, well, it's a neuronal pathway. I won't go into the neuroscience of it. Sorry, I just love that. I've written a little book that you can have. I'll send it over if you want. And that explains all this. Um, so yeah, it really is just muscles. It's like if you go running all the time and you know you get that high off running, when you stop running and you know you should be running, once you get going running again, it just feels so good that you just want to keep going. Same sort of thing. Um, but it does require intense initial practice. So um, you can't defeat a gang of 10 bandits by sending one new fighter per day for 100 days, right? It's best to send 100, gang, 100 um, fighters one day or, you know, at the end of the first week to fight off the bandits, which are what we're doing with the saboteurs, right? So it's 15 minutes a day. So this is broken up in three exercises of two minutes each. So we say 15 minutes because at the end of the day, you write down your little um, your journal about it. So that might take a little bit more. And it's for six to eight weeks, okay, depending on when we start. So that's how we do it. That's how we change your, your neuronal pathways in the brain, within the brain. So my gift to Asperger's female is the positive intelligence program. So the added bonus to this is the fact that I am myself an Aspie female, right? And I can hold that space for you during this program. During my own um, certification, um, I had a pod meeting like you, you will have. And, you know, I, I had one, I had a meltdown during one of these meetings. And as much as they tried, the people just didn't know how to cope. And um, this is when I just had this like sage moment, you know, and I saw the gift in this meltdown. The gift was, in fact, that it was showing me that I, I had to, to just own up the fact that I was autistic, Asperger's and all the rest of it, put it out there publicly so that, you know, other females could come out um, because females are so hard to diagnose. Right. Um, and there's still stigma about all this. And the more we research, the more we can see all this. But that's, you know, so my gift is is the fact that you do have like one of you in, in the arena, if you like. So the program itself um, is six weeks and I have one week to set it all up to make sure, you know, when we start, we're not sort of, I didn't download the app or it's not working on my phone or, you know, some sort of whatever it might be. Um, and then you have a one hour weekly video. So they used to be just a one hour, but now they've broken it down so that, you know, um, some of them are six minutes, others are 10, then it goes back to three and it's all um, labeled, right? All the, the, the videos are labeled so that, you know, if one day you can feel like watching two videos because those two topics are really interesting for you, then off you go. If you feel you can do the whole hour, great, but you do have the week to, to watch that. And it, now they've broken it down. I think it's, it's helped a lot of other um, clients of mine. So I think it's, it's a good thing they've done that. And when I started, it wasn't that, it was just a one hour video. Um, as I said, it's 15 minutes a day of practice on the application, on the phone. Um, there's the eight chapters of positive intelligence book. We provide the PDF so that you, you get a, an insight into all this, into how it can work and, you know, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And um, through the app, I continue to be your mental fitness coach throughout the entire year. So this is just an example of, you know, what we do. So the prep week will just be, you know, you do the assessments, you download the app and you have the first video to watch. Um, then we do the self-command, you know, we'll focus on the challenges of the day. They call them little challenges. Um, we intercept the judge. We see the accomplished saboteurs. In week four, we'll shift to sage, boost the sage power, we'll take action and you continue your practice. So, um, some of these are quite tough because, you know, when you look at your judge face on, it's, it's not very nice. So you have to be aware of that. Um, but I think we're, you know, um, used to this sort of, um, um, well, how can I, well, we're used to this sort of treatment of ourselves is not really a good way of saying it, but I, for lack of a better word, um, I think we are sort of used to um, dissecting our own emotions and, you know, questioning ourselves. Unfortunately, society is force that upon us um and this is what Shirzad says so normally when I read this I sort of burst into tears because you know I'm still working on this but I'll try um so I hope to help you fall more deeply in love with yourself this is what Shirzad Chamin says he's the guy that does all this um yeah and he really wants us to see the beauty of your own essence of the being you were the moment you were born you don't need to prove anything to anyone or perform for anyone or get 
any top of any mountain. Your essence is always there, unchanged and waiting for you to see it. Access its enormous powers and allow it to shine. So it's true that when you do love yourself more, you can, it's like a shield. I don't know how else to say it. Um, my, my daughter's playing Zelda at the moment and, you know, shield is one of the things that you get first and foremost before you go out and, you know, do all these wonderful tasks that uh, Link has to do. Um, so, yeah, shield is really, really important because it, it just gives you that safe space for yourself. And um, he really is, in, I'm just indebted to him for this and being able to bring it to other people. <coughs> Sorry. So I probably was a lot less than 20 minutes. Um, I know, I was bang on time. Okay, so I want to thank you. And as I say, you know, a lot of the other programs have all these, you know, um, competencies of doing this, the nine steps of that, the five pillars, da, da, da. We just have, you know, exercises to change your mental muscles um, so that you can rewire your brain. And it really does work. I want to thank you very much for paying attention. I will stop the recording and see your beautiful faces if I can. Okay, pause recording.